It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southwest region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors Southwest. Hi everybody, I am so happy you're along with us for the show today. Coming to you today from a power plant lake just over my left shoulder. There are power plant lakes scattered around both of our regions in the Southwest and Southeast. They're lakes that have the power plant located right on the shoreline they're either coal-fired or steam-generating plants that generate the electricity, but they use the water in the reservoir to cool the turbines. They release that hot water back out into the lake. It warms the surface temperature, changes the entire fishing dynamic. A lot of anglers take power plant lakes completely out of their fishing arsenal when that water temperature gets on late in the spring and the summer up in the high 80s and into the 90s. But on today's show, Going to give you some information, tips, and tactics that will help you catch bass in power plant lakes and keep them as a viable fishing tool right through the entire season. Now, to help us do that, I'm coming to you today from Brandy Branch Reservoir. It's a small 1,250 acre power plant lake located in deep east Texas, just north of the city of Carthage, not too far from the Texas Louisiana border. We're going to take the Bass Tracker Pro Team 175 out on its maiden voyage today. It's never been in the water, so we're going to give it a shot, give you a little information about it as well. And while we're doing that, we're taking you around your regions for your very latest fishing reports from our expert team of reporters. No matter where you live in either the southwest or the southeast, you're going to get your local lakes, rivers, and bays the latest fishing report for the week. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited about it. Right now, we get the boat launched. We get you back to the FSN studios for your weekend plan. The Salooner tables are not optimistic about the fishing outlook for this weekend. Poor conditions are forecast for both days with peak daylight activity starting in the afternoons around 3 o'clock on Saturday and 4 o'clock on Sunday. The sun will rise at 6.53 and set at 8 p.m. And look for the moon to be 79% visible in the evenings. Stay with us, we have all your fishing updates from around the Southwest on the way. Plus, I'll return with fishing legend Kevin Van Dam for the Whataburger Ask the Pro feature. Back in a bit. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. By Mercury Marine, celebrating 75 years of marine excellence. By Strin Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. By Tracker Boats, it's more than just a boat, it's a tracker. And by Fort Worth Nissan. Fox Sports Outdoors is powered by Fort Worth Nissan. Got him. Up. Big fish. Look at that gorgeous fish in that water right there. Wow, there's my first Brandy Branch bass right here. And it's a good one too. Wow. Got it hooked well too, look at that. Wow, <laughs> hey, there. Oh, and I'm whacking the camera with my rod tip. My first Brandy Branch bass. Hey, welcome back everybody, glad you're with us today. Spit out my uh, biffle bug. I'll show you what I caught that fish on. I'll give you lots of looks at baits later on, but that's a that's a Jean LaRue biffle bug right there. Kind of a yellow bottom, black top, and it caught a big toad right there, right off the bat. Man, it's got kind of a messed up place right there on her tail. Look at that. See right there, kind of a bloody spot right there. All right, we're on Brandy Branch Lake today talking power plant bass fishing. Let's let that fish go back. Let's talk a little bit about bass fishing on power plant lakes. First of all, you've got a big decision to make when you pull up to the boat ramp. That is, which side of the lake are you going to fish? The intake, cool water side, or the discharge, warm water side. Now, if it's the cold winter time, facing cold water temperatures, you want to fish the hot water discharge side of the power plant lake. If it's summertime, warm weather months, then you want to find the coolest water in the lake, and that's going to be on the intake side. So right now we're headed into these hot weather months, and the fish have long since spawned. 
They're about to be in a really hot weather pattern here and they're going to be moving out towards deep drop-offs where they can seek the shelter and the shade of the vegetation and the coolest water they can find going into summertime months. Let's get you started with some fishing reports from your local lake. Let's start with Brian Hughes in Texas Freshwater and Bill Olson on the coast. Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by More Security and Heritage Safes. Here we find ourselves on the Guadalupe River, home of the Texas state fish, the Guadalupe bass. Now given that a new record bass was recently caught on fly fishing gear, I thought I'd come down here and let you folks know exactly what this is all about. Now the Guadalupe bass is a small fish, even the record is under four pounds. So you're either going to use a spinning rod with about four to six pound test max, or use a three weight or maybe four weight fly rod at the most. If you're fly fishing, try your streamers and emerging insect type flies, and you might want to try very small popping bugs early in the morning. For the standard tackle users with a spinning reel and about four to six pound test line, use your road runners and your rooster tails, very small spinner baits. And of course, you can use some grubs and others like that. Use natural colors when the water's clear or use bright colors when you find the murky water. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you by More Security and Heritage Safes. Now let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the cut. Hi folks, this week's report is brought to you by Port Aransas on Mustang Island the fishing capital of Texas, where anglers enjoy pristine bays, estuaries, 18 miles of surf, and the deep blue waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Plus, the local restaurants will even cook your catch come sundown. Come fish and play Texas Island style. For more information, visit portarandas.org. Well, temperatures continue to fluctuate from normal to seven to eight degrees below normal. While water temperatures make a slow rise, they remain below where they should be normally. However, some really good speckled trout have come from trophy hotspots. On Sabine Lake, solid five to eight pound trout have been caught on the Louisiana side of the bay around the Mussel Flats, as well as at the mouths of channels and guts and drain marsh areas. Play the falling and rising tides. Best depths remain four to seven feet deep. Now, anglers are also catching solid trout in East Galveston Bay, as that bay returns to normal after the oil spill. Trinity Bay has also given up some solid fish over shell reefs. Anglers continue to seek refuge from the wind in the intercoastal waterway between Freeport and Chocolate Bay. When winds switch around strong from the southeast and tides rise, fish are starting to push back into the back lakes and marsh areas. Topwater lures, egret baits, kick a mullet junior, and strike pros hunchback have all been good artificial choices. Anglers wading the south shoreline and shell reefs in East Matagorda have picked up solid catches of trout. Redfish remain active around grassy shorelines either side of Pascavallo. Grassy shorelines, flats, and islands around the Corpus Christi Ship Channel have given up good specks. Redfish are in the mix behind the mangrove islands for those drifting. Now Baffin Bay has turned on big time with some solid trout. So has Long Bar, south of Cullens, and around three islands in the lower Laguna Madre. This weekend, Saturday has a double tide schedule of two high and two low tides. This Sunday has a single tide schedule of one high and one low. I'm Bill Olson, and I'll see you on the coast. There's a some bass right here. Not bad. Come on here. Uh-uh, quit. I want to show this fish to these people here. All right, we got us a bass right there. Look at that dude. Welcome back, everybody. You're on Fox Sports Outdoors, and uh, we're talking about power plant fishing today, and I want us to zoom out and show you something here. Look right here. We are right in front of the power plant here at uh, Brandy Branch Reservoir. And uh, let's talk just a second about power plant lakes. And I promised you a little information about the seasons. Everything's early in a power plant lake. Beginning with the spawn. They can spawn as early as December or January because again, they do it on water temperature. That water temperature starts getting into the 60s a lot earlier on a power plant lake than it does anywhere else. 
post spawn happens earlier which means it's going to be a little tough to catch for a while then they go into their summer pattern earlier so by april may the bass on a power plant lake are going to be moving out to deeper water and setting up for a summertime pattern where you're going to catch them with soft plastics Carolina rig, deep diving crankbait, something like that way out off underwater humps, ridges, points, and the outsides of grass lines. Anyway, that's a little information on what happens in a power plant lake. I've got to do surge. Well, maybe I can just pop this hook out right here. I got it, I got it. There's my biffle bug. All right, we're gonna let this bass go back and let's check in in Louisiana with Cajun Phil and Kevin. Tell you what, last week I told you the rivers were pretty and they were catching bass. Well, forget all of that. We've had nothing but rain since I told you that. It's been raining, it's been windy. Right now, all of our rivers are very messed up. From the Red River, the Calcasieu, Sabine, all the reports I get, muddy, high, don't go. It's non-fishable, it's really bad. As far as the bass fishing goes, talked to a couple of guys over Lake Darbone. They said they were catching bass, throwing rattle traps on the north end of the lake, fishing over the grass. Also, we got some good reports as to white perch bit caught under the bridges on Lake Darbone. Best story, still considers to be Toledo Bend. I'll tell you what, another 10 pounder caught this week. Matter of fact, it was in the paper just yesterday. I saw it. They caught it on a crankbait. That's not bad. Now let's turn it over to Captain Kevin, see what's going on with the saltwater scene. Kev? Thanks, Dad. Well, I tell you what, friends, the saltwater fishing, we're still a little bit behind across the whole state of Louisiana. Dad and I just came back from fishing the Chalmette area. I was actually down there two out of the last three weeks fishing some redfish tournaments, and fishing's still a little off, a little tough down there. It had such a hard winter and lots of rainfall. I tell you what, it's got things pushed back. Over here on Coppershoe Lake, pretty much the same scenario. We had a hard winter. We don't have a lot of bait in right now. Fishing is slow, but there are some good reports out there. Some redfish getting caught in the shallow marshes on Johnson Gold Spoons, and of course, can't beat a shrimp under a popping cork. The other, there's some good trout showing up if you can catch the weather right. Corkies, top waters like she dogs. Tell you what, fish those in two to four foot of water. Try to find a good mud bottom, that way it heats up. And I tell you what, there are some big trout getting caught, but there's not many. Hey, our sweepstakes for the month of April is going on right now, and some lucky winner is going to win one of the best sonar GPS units Lawrence has ever invented. It's the Elite 7 GPS charting technology, traditional 2D sonar, and 3D sonar all in the same unit. You can split that screen three ways and see them all at the same time. Plus, someone else wins a brand new Lose BB1, the longest casting bait cast reel ever, plus a bunch of motor guide gear, shirts, and fishing hats. To enter, go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com or our Facebook page. Get entered now. The contest ends at the end of April. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. By Lou's, setting a new standard in fishing performance. Feel the difference. By Strike King Lures, number one in fishing. By Lowrance Electronics, find, navigate, dominate. And by Whataburger. Try one of Whataburger's all-time favorites, 24 hours a day. Got him. Look at him coming through all that, all the lily pads. Come on, Strand. Hold on, Strand line. All right, there's another one. Welcome back everybody. Power plant bass fishing today on Fox Sports Outdoors. That's just a long skinny male fish. I want you to see something here. I pulled up here and just decided to fish some of these flooded lily pads and grass beds here. And you can see just completely choked with grass, hydrilla, lily pads. And here's your next lesson about power plant fishing. The fish will get shallow year round and power plant lakes don't need to be crossed off of your list. Just like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, just because it gets to be late spring, early summertime, water gets hot, weather gets hot. These fish will still bite as long as you've got some cover, some grass for these fish to get up around lily pads, weed beds, those types of things. You can catch bass right in the hot weather months, power plant lakes. Now let me give you a quick list here of some power plant lakes across the region that I know of. In Texas, you've got Fayette County, Gibbons Creek, Monticello, Welsh. Just a couple of them in Oklahoma are Conowa and Sooner. 
In Georgia, you've got Sinclair and Juliet. And in South Carolina, you've got Wiley. All right, let's check in. In Oklahoma, here's your fishing reports with Gary Dollar. Well, we finally got to the time of year when on any given outing, you can have an amazing day of fishing. That's exactly what George Tolson did on a recent trip to Lake Hudson in northeastern Oklahoma. George and Eli Smith were bottom bug and dragging that biffle bug on a hard head two to six feet of water across the rocky areas caught a lot of largemouth bass. Now, George himself had 10 fish over four pounds. The largest, about six, also had three or four five pounders too. Now, good reports coming in from many places across the state for bass with a lot of those fish coming from depths of six to eight feet. So that's a good indication they're starting to really stay getting close to moving to the banks. Now, also getting some good reports on the spinnerbait bite. First time I've heard one of those in quite a while, but you know, some of these warm, windy days we're having really contribute well to a good spinnerbait bite. In last week's report, I had pro angler Andrew Upshaw talking about how he rigs a soft plastic swim bait on something other than an umbrella rig to catch bass this time of year. That's exactly what young Seth Stevens of Broken Arrow did. Fishing the LaRue Sweet Swimmer on a jig head, he caught this five and a half pound largemouth, this big old crappie, and some other bass in the neighborhood pond. Jack Kitchen on a recent trip down to Lake Eufaula said he caught some male crappie in that two to three foot depth, had to move out in that six to eight foot depth to catch the bigger females that are starting to stage, moving closer to the banks. Great time of year to be fishing in Oklahoma, but one thing about it, you can't catch them if you don't go. There's one. Don't come up. There he is. Good fish. Good bass. All right. Okay. All right. There's one more for you right there. Man, we have we've done well today on our first trip. The beautiful Brandy Branch Reservoir. What a what a great lake. These are all Florida strain bass, by the way. I, I looked it up on the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department website. That's all that's been stocked in here is pure strain, Florida bass, dark color, little mouth, big fat body, just a beautiful fish. Caught that bass on a soft plastic jerk bait. That's a Jean LaRue salt flicker with no weight. And I'll show it to you at the end of the show. Throwing it out there, letting it go down deep on the edge of that grass, twitching it back real slow and you can get bit that way. Hey, I want to mention something. This is the maiden voyage for my brand new Bass Tracker Pro Team 175. It is an amazing boat. I don't have time to tell you all the features, but what I can tell you is that this boat has a brand new, first time ever exclusive diamond coat finish. It's four times more durable than regular paint on any other boat. I'm going to tell you a lot more about it, give you a complete walkthrough of this on our YouTube channel. Go to our website, foxsportsoutdoors.com, and then click on the YouTube logo. It takes you to our YouTube channel. Click on the How To video section. Find the one for the Bass Tracker Pro Team 175. I'll give you all the features and a special warning that you need to hear about the brand new Diamond Coat Fit. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. By Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. By Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. And by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Welcome to the big leagues. Welcome back everyone. It's time for the Waterburger Ask the Pro, where viewers can get insider tips from professional anglers. This week's question comes from Melba who wonders, does the color red really attract more fish? Good question. For the answer, we checked with fishing legend Kevin Van Dam. Overall in the industry, I think, you know, the red line, the red hooks are waning a little bit, but I can tell you without a doubt that red baits, red crank baits, red things, you know, red is still a really strong color. You know, without a doubt, springtime in the south, Texas especially, those crayfish down there, Louisiana, through that whole area, they're really red, but I catch a lot of bass on red crankbaits, red diamond shads, red lipless crankbaits like a red eye shad, all spring long. Red to me is a color that I like to use when the water's stained. You know, if there's crayfish in the, in the body of water and it's springtime, those bass are around the rocks and that, it's a color that I've always got tied on. Thanks, Kevin. If you need help from one of the pros, visit our website and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit your question. Now let's see who wins a new pair of sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. 
This week's winner in the Coast to Catch of the Week contest is David Copeland of Montgomery, Texas. He's shown here with a nine and a six and a half pound largemouth bass he caught at Lake Conroe, two minutes apart. Also, here's a little bonus for you. Conroe's in a good run the last year or so. Here's Theodore Foley of Conroe, who didn't have a scale but caught a big one, and William Mitash of Willis, Texas, with a 10 and a half pound largemouth, also from Conroe. If you would like to enter our Costa Catch of the Week contest, go to our website, foxsportsoutdoors.com, right hand side of the page. Click on the Costa Catch of the Week box and follow the instructions to send us your photo. You could win a brand new pair of Costa sunglasses and you can see all of the Costa frame and lens styles at the Costa website. Again, go back to the front page of our website and click on the Costa logo. There you can see all of the frame and lens styles that Costa makes, including the ones that I've been wearing on this week's episode, Tuna Alley. On the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature, it's the right gear to catch bass at your favorite power plant lake. Now here are some of the baits that work today on Brandy Branch in Texas. Starting with the top left, that's the Strike King Tour Grade Spinnerbait. Top right is the Strike King Red Eye Shad, that's a lipless rattling crankbait. Bottom left, a Texas rigged Jean LaRue Biffle Bug. And bottom right is the Jean LaRue Salt Flicker rigged weightless fish like a soft plastic jerkbait along the outside edges of the grass bed. I was driving down I-35 in Texas recently when I spotted three different billboards for the CASA program. Now, CASA stands for Court Appointed Service Advocate. That's just a fancy name for a volunteer who represents children when they have the misfortune of being taken from their homes by Child Protective Services. CASA volunteers work with the judges and the court system to be the voice for those children that they otherwise would not have. My wife and I have been volunteers in the CASA program for almost five years now, and I can speak from experience when I tell you that it can be a very gut-wrenching job, but it also can be an extremely rewarding job. Whatever, it is a job that can make a difference in a child's life, not only now, but for the rest of their lives. If you'd like to look at the CASA program, look at their website at casaforchildren.org. Sort through the website, see if that might just be an opportunity that you could volunteer for. It's a nationwide program. There is a CASA program near you. Hey, I hope you enjoyed our trip today to Brandy Branch Reservoir in Deep East Texas, north of Carthage. Caught some good quality bass here, and this is very representative of the fishing and power plant lakes all across our region. Go check out one near you, and you can fish them literally year round. Now don't forget to join us on next week's episode. We'll be back Thursday night at 1030 and Saturday morning at our new time of 730. Now be sure to check out the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. The latest show times are always listed there and if there's ever any change, you'll be the first to know it by checking it out in that location. We will see you next week. Until then, I'm Barry Stokes saying be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.